Hi, my name is Joost Decker. Please follow me. I was born in Berlin, in Germany, and I'm now living in Hamburg, also in Germany. The main band I'm playing with is mostly known in countries where they speak German, which is Jan Delay and Disco Number no. 1. And there's another band I really like, which is called BBFC. And this is around a guitar player from San Francisco, uh, who goes by the name of Barry Finity. He's a very uh, famous guitar player. He used to play with Miles Davis and Joe Cocker and the Crusaders and, and so on. And so we have a band and we try to play as often as we can. Uh, piano and drums. My forte on the kit, I like to play really soft and really loud. But I, I would consider myself play, playing at medium volumes most of the time. I don't really hit that hard, no, I don't. Oh, um, I like sonar drums, minor cymbals and percussion, uh, Vic Firth sticks, um, a hat, armor cases and uh, Bayer uh, dynamic microphones. First drummer I knew by name uh, was Peter Chris from KISS. No, I'm not self-taught. I had a very good teacher when I was... Uh, I started studying with him when I was 12 or 13, I don't remember exactly. His name is Peter Weise. He lives in the very north of Germany in Kiel. And um, I studied with him for six years. And after that I, I uh, moved to a different city and uh, didn't have any lessons for two years. And then I went to Drummers Collective in New York. And another thing I did was a year later I did the thing called Pop Course, uh, which is in Hamburg, Germany. And the teacher there was Udo Dahm, who is very well known in Germany and a very good teacher. And that was it. So after the Drummers Collective, I felt like I had enough material to come up with my own exercises, and I still do. So a lot of Different players inspire me today, but I don't have a teacher. But there's this online drum school called onlinelessons.tv, and they regularly do master classes. And sometimes there are drummers that I really like, so uh, I might attend one of these master classes for two reasons. Uh, on the one hand, I'm very interested in how they teach, and on the other hand, I just like to hear different ways of looking at the same instrument. No, no. I don't think so. No, what, you know, I it never felt like a, a sacrifice when I wanted to practice instead of going to a party or, or I wanted to practice instead of going to the movies or whatever people do. And so, no, I don't feel like it was a sacrifice, no. I, I wanted to do everything I did, yeah. I think in the times that we are living in with business, businesses um, who all calculate how much they gain from certain things and how much they lose on other things and everything is based on numbers. I just like and love the idea of doing something that's just done out of passion and not because it really makes sense in terms of money or numbers. And I'm passionate about it and I still like doing it and it's, it's something I really need to do. Uh, it's hard to say, it really depends on, on my age. Um, so I said the first drummer I knew by name was Peter Chris. so KISS influenced me at a certain period and then I got into ACDC and then I would say I was more interested in, in uh, music that is less, um, less rocky, less distorted guitars and more funky I would say, or soulful and this is probably the music that inspired me the most. No, no, no life-changing moments. All the things I did, it seems like I did climb a ladder rung by rung and then it wasn't like, yeah, and now this happens or that happens. No, it's all like natural, it all feels quite natural. I learned a lot from Kim Plainfield at Drummers Collective. I learned a lot from listening to uh, Steve Gadd with El Duro, for example, or all the other drummers that played with El Duro. I learned a lot from listening to fusion music and Dave Weckl and Vinnie Colaiuta and Dennis Chambers. And yeah, these are, and, and, and I, I shouldn't forget uh, Omar Hakim uh, when he first started playing with Sting. That was a very important CD for me because, you know, when I was 
I don't know how, how old I was, but at that time, I really uh, started to understand what he was doing, so it really appealed to me. I'm always working on trying to enjoy what I do. A dream gig. It's hard to tell because sometimes you think this or that band would be great to play in, but then it turns out that the, the guy who runs the band is hard to stand and it's not nice to work with him. So it's really hard to tell. Um, no, I don't have a dream gig, but I probably, like 10 years ago, I would have said Sting, but today it's not a, you know, it's, uh, of course I wouldn't say no, but no, not a dream gig. No, I can't say that, no. You know, I like reading, I like running, but that's something, that's ordinary things. That's not really a hobby. And apart from that, I'm really, into music and into my family yeah that's it my life motto uh, be true to yourself so yes uh, thank you very much for joining me here we yes. are at the music messe and Joost is very busy playing the drums teaching the drums giving autographs selling books your own books and i was wondering if you have a, a tip for drummers who are away from their kit who are traveling or waiting for something to practice their groove on the go maybe that groove on the go mm. so what i like doing is just um, make sure that i know how the most important polyrhythms sound and if i'm not really uh, capable of hearing them i would just you know play them on my leg and make sure that for example three over four is a polyrhythm which works in eighth note triplets so you play one two Three, four, one, two, three, four, and then you accent every fourth note. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So now I know how that sounds. But if I wouldn't know how it uh, sounded, I would just do that all the time to make this rhythm clear to myself. Mm -hmm. And for maybe you're interested in quintuplets and you want to play five over four and then you could do something like this so i don't know if this improves your i guess it improves your grooves because um, it improves your overall overall sense of rhythm mm -hmm. that's something you could do but apart from that i think it's a good idea to work on grooves while you have a kit because it has to do with how you move in a certain tempo and um, i think that's hard to do without a kit and you improve to groove also by going to dance? I don't know. Huh? I, you I, do not dance? I do. <laughs> I do, but, <laughs> uh, but I don't know if that really improves your capability of playing grooves on a kit. Mm. I, I, I'm tempted to say no, it's fun, uh -huh. but I don't think, no, I just don't think so. so. But if you're at a point where you can dance in time with music then probably <laughs> dancing would help but uh, normally I think no and when listening to music yeah uh, and you think the drummer grooves really good yeah. how do you find out why he does groove so well well first of all I think it always has to do with the other musicians also so um, if you feel like this song is really grooving or appealing to your way of hearing groove then um, Every other instrument has to do with it too, right? It's not only the drums, and um, and then it's it's a matter of it's really a matter of feeling. So some some drummers just have a certain feeling that I really like, and that's what I call groove when when it feels good what I hear. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes it helps if you listen closely to how they how they uh, play dynamically, if they hit the snare really loud or soft, and how the dy dynamics in the bass drum are. But to me, it's um, sometimes more, not about being uh, so analytic about it, more maybe um, the, the, the volume levels are, are interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, but still, the other musicians have to groove too. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. And the drummer doesn't start the others to, to groove? It certainly helps, right? Um, but um, I feel best when I play in a band with musicians that define groove as much as I do. 
-hmm. Of course, my instrument is a lot stronger on groove, but for example, if you have a guitar and it's play, it's, it plays the that's a very, very strong part of the groove. And if, if that doesn't sit right, I, I can't, it, what I play doesn't make sense. And so I like, I like musicians that really take responsibility and then play, have a very strong voice on what they do and that helps me play better. Mm -hmm. And the other way around. Okay. So if I have a very confident way of playing a certain groove, they can rely on that and then play off of that. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But um, so you shouldn't be shy when you define a rhythm. Mm -hmm. Nobody should. Okay. No instrument. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were you in the beginning? Were you shy about that? Yeah, no, the good thing about beginning is that you think that you sound so good that you're not shy. <laughs> I wasn't shy. In my first band when I was a child, I always played a drum solo in the first song. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any problems with that. Today I would think, well, maybe not in the first song, mm -hmm. but you know, that's, that's beautiful about starting um, because you, you, you don't realize how you really sound, right? Mm -hmm. You feel like, wow, this is really good and might not be that good, but mm -hmm. that's okay because you're just a beginner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But the confidence of beginners, especially when they are children, is most of the times, I, I felt like I had, my confidence was, you know, endless. I started questioning myself when I got better and then realized what well, wasn't good. Mm -hmm. But before that I was just, yeah. Where's your confidence now? It depends really. Um, I don't know how I sound really because I, I never hear myself play like somebody else hears me play. Um, but it, it really is, I start playing and sometimes it feels right from the beginning and sometimes it doesn't. And when it doesn't, I just take my time. You know, it's just, it's, it's like, I don't force it. it I just know it'll feel good if I uh, don't try to push the good feeling. What I learned is I don't question why don't I feel as good as I as I could. I just, it's just that's what it is and then uh, I take it from there. Mm -hmm. And normally it gets really good after quite some time, but um, it's not always the best feeling from the start, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you hear little things you don't like or, you know, just go with the flow, mm. I think. That's okay. what you need to do. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's very interesting. I hope it was interesting for you too. If you are even more interested in groove, pick up your uh, book or go to a clinic, see him play live. Yes. And um, well, I'll also post links to your hit records, maybe. Yes. So Great. check them out. <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching. Thank you for your time. My and pleasure. See you soon. Bye. 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 <laughs>